Today, let us share the Word of God with a sermon entitled, The Way of the Truth. Under this subject, let us receive God's grace. Throughout our life of faith, while we are walking the path of the truth, we sometimes encounter people who oppose and slander the truth and criticize our faith. In the past, there was a playwright named George Bernard Shaw. George Bernard Shaw once invited those who specialized in criticism to his house. When the dinner party was in full swing, he showed them a piece of art and said, let me show you a very special, very precious piece of work. I just obtained this artwork, so please take a good look at this. This is Rodin's drawing. In those days, people evaluated Rodin's works as poor. On the contrary, Michelangelo's works were highly praised. Every critic regarded his work as excellent. Hearing that it was Rodin's work, the critics began to speak harshly when they saw it. Oh, Rodin's drawing is always terrible. The composition and drawing are poor. Look at the mood. It's dull. The colors are too dismal. He's like an amateur. The composition is awkward. They sharply criticized the work. Because they were critics, that was their job. Suddenly, George Bernard Shaw looked very embarrassed and stood before them and said, Oh no, I, I made a terrible gaffe. This is Michelangelo's drawing, but I mistakenly said Rodin's. When he said it was Rodin's work, they severely criticized it. But now, it turned out to be Michelangelo's. In those days, as for Michelangelo's artwork, even for a single sketch or for a drawing of a fish, they praised it, saying, Oh, this artwork is profound. However, since it turned out to be Michelangelo's work, they all blushed with shame, looking at each other. The same goes for the truth. The truth does not change by people's words or fixed ideas. Although time goes by, the age passes, and the environment changes, the truth can never change. We are now running along the path of the truth. People around us may criticize us in many respects. The critics poured out insults on the drawing. That's terrible. It's worse than that of an amateur. The colors are dull. However, it turned out to be the work of Michelangelo, whom they always praised so highly. Hearing the name alone, they evaluated the same work in different ways. Everyone, we are living in this kind of world today. About 2,000 years ago, our God, Jesus Christ, came to the earth to save mankind. However, what did the people call Jesus in those days? At the mere fact that He came in the flesh and taught what was different from the doctrines of Judaism, they called Him the Nazarene sect. But was it heresy that Jesus spoke? 
Let's take a look at the book of Acts, chapter 24. In this age too, those who have the truth must walk the correct path to the end. Without concerning ourselves with people's evaluation and prejudice, we must always pay attention to God's evaluation, thinking, what will God, the owner of the truth, think about me? Let's go to Acts chapter 24, verse 1. Five days later, the high priest Ananias went down to Caesarea with some of the elders and a lawyer named Tertullus, and they brought their charges against Paul before the governor. The high priest Ananias was accompanied by some elders and a lawyer to bring charges against Paul. Verse 2 says, When Paul was called in, Tertullus presented his case before Felix. We have enjoyed a long period of peace under you, and your foresight has brought about reforms in this nation. Everywhere and in every way, most excellent Felix, we acknowledge this with profound gratitude. The high priest and the lawyer who persecuted Paul tried to win the heart of the governor with sweet talk. Let's see verse 5. We have found this man to be a troublemaker, stirring up riots among the Jews all over the world. He is what? He is a ringleader of the Nazarene sect. They called the Apostle Paul a ringleader of the Nazarene sect. In those days, faith in Jesus was considered as heresy to all the Jews. The perspective and faith of the religious establishment were different from the early church. As their view was different, they branded the early church as heresy and made every effort to expel the Christians from their community. Today, however, what do people call the Apostle Paul? They call him the Apostle of Apostles and an indispensable member of the early church. It is not too much to say that Apostle Paul is one of the best role models in our faith. However, the judges, lawyers, the high priest, and religious leaders in those days denounced Apostle Paul as a ringleader of the Nazarene sect. The same situation that happened at the party held by George Bernard Shaw happened 2,000 years ago and is repeated today. As the name changed, the artwork looked like a great piece. Even a drawing that looks like a child had scribbled on it looks like a masterpiece if it has the name Picasso on it. This is how people evaluate things. The high priests, the Pharisees, and the Jews rejected the early church. Just because the saints believed in Jesus as God who came to the earth in the flesh. Jesus' teachings are the words of salvation and eternal life and the way of truth for us to go to heaven. But they all disregarded the way of the truth. They said, Isn't this man Jesus, the carpenter's son? And began to add a bad connotation to it. They said, Whoever believes in that person is a heretic. They did not think about God's prophecies. Let's see a few cases that happened in those days. According to John, chapter 10, verse 30, it is written, I and the Father are one. Whose words are these? Jesus said, I and the Father are one, which means I am God. When he testified about himself this way, what did people say? Verse 31. Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any of these, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy, because you, a what? 
a mere man claim to be God? How can a man claim to be God? They picked up stones to stone Jesus. Today, however, according to John chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 14, we all know who Jesus is. We can easily recognize that He is God. Through Philippians chapter 2, verse 5-2, You can see who Jesus is by nature. He is in very nature God, isn't he? Even though the way of the truth was treated as heresy in the days of the early church, the forefathers of faith did not compromise their faith at all because they were confident that it was the way of salvation, the way of eternal life, and the way of the truth. Brothers and sisters, if we too are confident that the way we are walking now is the way of the truth, we don't need to pay attention to people's assessment or approval. Rather, we should care about what God, who is the truth, thinks of us and the path we are walking now. In the days of the early church, Apostle Paul was called the Nazarene sect, and the people even picked up stones to stone Jesus. They did this because they did not know the truth and were influenced by the prevailing religious views. In short, the religious assessment in those days formed a fixed idea. What was it? They said, You, a mere man, claim to be God and picked up stones. People thought, God would never come as a man. They had such a fixed idea. Is it hard for God to become a man? If it is, People must not say that God is Almighty. Do you think it is possible to create the earth from nothing? God is Almighty. However, people's fixed ideas and the popular opinion of that age block the way of the truth and stop people from going that way. The members of the early church went through many difficulties at that time. However, today, their faith and all of their decisions are respected, right? In this age, who calls Paul a heretic? Who calls Jesus a heretic? Is there anyone who calls Peter a heretic? However, in those days, they were all called heretics. Remembering that, we should not pay attention to people's appraisal, but only focus on whose appraisal? God's appraisal. Then, no matter how many years pass by, we will be able to receive God's approval. Let's look at Acts chapter 5, verse 17. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go, stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they had been told, and began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, They called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported, We found the jail securely locked, with the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were puzzled. Wondering what would come of this, then someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. At that, 
The captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. Having brought the apostles, they made them appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey whom? We must obey God rather than men. Regardless of the appraisal and judgment of people, who should we obey? The apostles said, We must obey God rather than men. They taught the people, saying, It is right to obey God. Brothers and sisters, the religious leaders in those days rejected the truth of God, regarding it as heresy. As they disregarded and despised the truth, the spiritual world that they will enter will certainly not be the kingdom of heaven. How pitiful it will be for them. Truth and heresy, truth and falsehood cannot be discerned by people's evaluation. It is by the teachings of God that things are evaluated and judged. Isn't it? In the history of the early church, one of the reasons people regarded Jesus as a heretic was that a mere man claims to be God. On the contrary, the saints of the early church of God strongly pointed out that those who deny God's coming in the flesh are all heretics. The Bible flatly says that it is the spirit of the Antichrist. Let's look at 2 John chapter 1, verse 7. Many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the what? The deceiver and the Antichrist. The early church emphasized that those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ coming in the flesh are ruled by the spirit of the Antichrist. What is the Christian faith? The truth of God's coming in the flesh is the foundation of Christian faith. However, those who had that faith were all regarded as heretics and stoned by the religious leaders of that time. It happened about 2,000 years ago, and none of them are left alive on the earth. They have all gone to another world. What will happen to them? We need to think about this. The religion that believes in Jesus as God who came to the earth in the flesh 2,000 years ago is Christianity. In those days, however, there was Judaism that denied Jesus though they claimed to believe in God. The Jews oppressed the church of God. As for this situation, we can see many parts in the New Testament, particularly in the four Gospels. It is the same today, too. What does the Bible call the Word of God? The truth. The Word of God is the truth. Human theories vary as time, history, and environment change. It is just like how geocentric theory was changed to heliocentric theory. Human theories change, but what about the Word of God? It is unchanging. So what do we call it? The truth. If something changes because the age or the environment changes, it cannot be considered the truth. God's Word goes beyond ages and surroundings. Let's see the timeless words of God in Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been, what? 
have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made. The Bible tells us that we can see God's invisible, divine nature and qualities through all creation. So that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. When you read Romans chapter 1 continually, it says God's invisible power and divine nature are hidden in what has been made. There is one important thing that God wants us to know. Up until now, how have the churches understood God? They've understood that there is only one God, God the Father, right? They teach that the one God, God the Father, created everything and gives salvation. That's why such churches persecute us when we say, our church believes in God the Father and God the Mother. The situation of 2,000 years ago is repeated. In those days, the Jews took Apostle Paul to court, calling him the Nazarene sect. Likewise, they've taught people that there is only one God, the Father. They've never mentioned God the Mother until now. Now that we testify to what is written in the Bible, all their fixed ideas, prejudices, and teachings are going to fall. As they are about to fall, what do they do to prevent their group from falling? They make excuses for their teachings and spread rumors about the Church of God that teaches the truth. To cover their shame and disgrace, they are doing what the Jews did 2,000 years ago. Brothers and sisters, we must only follow the way of the truth that God taught us. Which way do we all want to go? Isn't it the way to heaven, salvation, and eternal life? Let's think of how people acted at the party held by George Bernard Shaw. If he had said, this is the work of Michelangelo, nobody would have criticized it. From the beginning, they must have praised it. It's superb. Great composition. Beautiful colors. They would have never said, the colors are dismal. But when he said, it's the work of Rodin, they criticized it harshly. Rodin's work is awful. This is exactly what is happening nowadays. We're living in the age when God comes to the earth with the new name. This is neither the age of the Father nor the age of the Son. It is the age of the Holy Spirit. In the age of the Holy Spirit, whom does God the Holy Spirit come with to save us? Because it is the last age. The Spirit and the Bride come together as God the Father and God the Mother. They've come to the earth to find all their children, including their youngest child, and lead them to the kingdom of heaven, right? That's why it is written in Romans chapter 1 that God's divine nature is hidden in all creation. We know Revelation chapter 4 says that God created everything with His will in it. Everything on the earth contains God's will. Isn't it amazing? God created the birds in the sky. Nobody can deny that. Birds breathe, right? They have mouths to eat with and bowels to excrete with. It's amazing that humans on the land 
birds in the sky, and fish in the sea had the same organ system. They are the creation of one artist. In this earthly environment, we have so much evidence that God exists. We must follow the way of the truth and enter the eternal kingdom of heaven that God has prepared for us. Let us not waver or be shaken by the worthless words of the people of the world. Let us only follow the way of the truth. God said God's invisible qualities are clearly seen in what has been made. Everything that has been made by God has its father and mother. Birds have their fathers and mothers. Fish have their fathers and mothers. Animals on the ground and humans are the same. They all have their father and mother. Who made all those the same? Did you make it? Did I make it? No, God made it. When God made something, there is God's will for sure, right? Let us go to Revelation chapter 4. God's word is the truth. The truth is not something that changes according to the age or environment, like a man's word does. The word of God is the truth. It never changes. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will, by God's will, they were created. Why did God create all things this way? Why do all living things have fathers and mothers? Why do birds have fathers and mothers? Why did God make fish in the sea too have fathers and mothers? We should think about this matter. Through all this, God wanted to reveal the hidden qualities of God the Creator. God wanted to teach us God's nature. Let's see Genesis chapter 1. People in the world have had a fixed idea for centuries. Although they say the Word of God is the truth, they don't actually believe it. It is not like we have different Bibles. It is the same Bible, the same teaching. However, they distort the Bible according to their views. All we need is to just accept the Word as it is given. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 reads, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Here God said, Let us make man. Did God say, One God made man? Us is not a singular expression. It is plural. Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. In whose image? In God's image, male was created. In God's image, female was created. This is God's word, the unchanging truth, isn't it? This word of truth remains for thousands or tens of thousands of years. It is the word of truth that stands forever, for all generations. In the image of God, male and female were created. Then, in whose image was a man created? In the male image of God. Don't you think so? The Bible says that male was created in the image of God. We call the male image of God Father, 
right? He is God the Father who gives us life and bread. In the image of God, female was also created. Then, can't we confirm that there is the female image of God through the female that was created? What should we call the female image of God? Just as we call the male image of God, Heavenly Father, we must call her Heavenly Mother, who gives us life and breath. God has already given us the answer through all creation that God the Mother as well as God the Father exists. The Bible says no man can make excuses with such clear evidence. Isn't this the word that we just read in Romans chapter 1, verse 20? They cannot make excuses. We couldn't believe in God the Mother because we didn't know her or hear about her. Brothers and sisters, we must never be shaken by people's skewed remarks. They say, the Church of God has a different doctrine from other churches. They're strange. All we need is to believe in the truth. We should reject and ignore any word or teaching that is not from the Bible. As we believe in God the Mother, the things that happened to Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 24 are happening today. The high priest Ananias, the elders of Judaism, and a lawyer named Tertullus brought Apostle Paul to the court and accused him of belonging to a cult. The prophecies of the Bible cannot fail. From Genesis chapter 1, we can confirm that both God the Father and God the Mother must exist. Prejudices of the world and stereotypes of that age can never break the way of the truth. The truth is only from God. Man's ideas, philosophy, or thoughts change when the environment changes. Such a thing can never be the truth. God's Word goes beyond eras, situations, and environments. God always exists as God the Father and God the Mother. When we go up to the kingdom of heaven, there are father and mother. Before we came down to the earth after committing sins in heaven, who were there in heaven? There were God the Father and God the Mother. Everyone, this is the truth. Let's see Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. But the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is who? Our mother. Here, our mother does not refer to our human mothers. Let's continue with verse 27. For it is written, Be glad, O barren woman, who bears no children. Break forth and cry aloud, you who have no labor pains, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. Now you, brothers, like Isaac, are children of what? Children of promise. Those who have received the promise of eternal life are children of promise, right? 1 John chapter 2, verse 25 says, This is what He promised us, even eternal life. Those who believe in God the Mother receive eternal life. That's why they're called the children of promise. Let's see verse 29. At that time, the son born in the ordinary way persecuted the son born by the power of the Spirit. It is the same now. Who persecutes who? Those who are born in the ordinary way persecute those who are born by the power of the Spirit. It is the same now. Verse 30. But what does the scripture say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son. For the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with the free woman's son. Therefore, brothers, we are not children of the slave woman, but of the free woman. What is the relationship between the children and the woman? 
The woman is the mother of the children. Don't we surely have our spiritual mother? We must be proud that we have our spiritual mother. We must go to heaven with our heavenly mother. Apostle John saw all this in a vision and said, Father and mother exist together so that we may learn the true appearance of God. Let's see one more verse in Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22 verse 17 reads, The Spirit and the Bride say, You are all aware of the Spirit, right? We're familiar with the Trinity, that is, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Father refers to the male image of God. God the Son, too, refers to the male image of God. God the Son is God the Father Himself, according to the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one and the same. These titles all refer to the male image of God, God the Father. That's why it's the Trinity, right? The Spirit refers to God the Father. The bride is the bride of the Father. Then who is the bride of the Father? Definitely, she is our mother. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. Come to whom? Come to the Spirit and the bride. We must go to God the Father and God the Mother because it is the only place where we can receive God's promise of salvation and eternal life. We must go to the place where God the Father and God the Mother dwell. There are numerous religions, churches, and denominations. Numerous people have their own beliefs and doctrines. However, the place we should look for and go to is already determined in the Bible. The Bible says we must go to the place where God the Father and God the Mother dwell. We must go to Father and Mother. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Only when we accept the Spirit and the Bride, God the Father and God the Mother, can we receive the water of life. All the secrets of the 66 books of the Bible can be solved only when we believe in God the Father and God the Mother. The day of Father's coming is drawing near. The children of Zion are always with Heavenly Mother. Heavenly Mother leads us, encourages us, fills up where we are lacking, and guides us to the right path. She is the throne of judgment. Realizing that such a Heavenly Mother is with us, let us never lose pride and courage and surely accomplish the mission to preach to 7 billion people this year. Hoping you all receive God's grace, I conclude the sermon. Thank you very much.